Yes. So from there, if we were to count the coin, it's like we are getting back to, if we were to count another 60 years to come, mm -hmm. where should Uganda be? And Fred, before the break, you did mention about the issue to do with development. Mm -hmm. But how possible can this come? There's something, Joram, you put forward. I, I, I don't know whether Dr. picked attention when you said politics aside. Yes. Mm -hmm. I, I, I don't think you can put politics aside, and I can tell you why. Please do. We have economics and we have politics. And they have to move. The people that make policies that regulate the economics come from this side. Mm. Of the political court. Okay. If the policy is coming from the 529 members of parliament, if the policies are poor, what the president has talked about may never come to pass. We are going to be limited with whatever we are doing. Exactly. So this side is equally, equally important. And that's why we have a program here called the Polygons. You look at the policies, you look at the, the polygon, you look at the policies. Yes. And connect dots with economics mm -hmm. and see to it that what are some of the policies we need to put forward as a government to see to it that what president is talking about is actually real and relevant. Mm -hmm. In our day to day. But I would also want to, when you said Uganda at 60 years, I, I will not ask you how old you are, but <laughs> me, <laughs> I, I, I will not. <laughs> <laughs> so if I am 30 years of age, yes. what is important mm. is for me to ask myself as Uganda celebrates 60 years of independence, yes. me, Fred Makubia, who is 60 years old, who is 30 years old. Mm. Am I financially independent? To celebrate. To celebrate this independence. Yes. Am I intellectually independent? That doesn't mean I should not pick views from other people. Mm -hmm. But you've heard of people who say you're celebrating years in life, but you've never had life in years. You've, you've had that kind, that yeah, kind of sure. thought. Yeah, okay. It's very possible. possible. You celebrate the numbers, yeah, but you've never... The, the success or the achievement. Exactly. But the days you've had on earth... Are you, quite many. Are quite many, mm. but you've never had life in years. So that is where the critical discussion as a country should be. If 75% of the population of Uganda is made up by young people, what is important for a young person out there is to ask ourselves, yes, thank you, President, we've made 60 years. But as an individual, where have I reached? And that drives me to what is important. Yes. If, we, if the President talks about the professors, the academias, and all this, I drove myself to the fact that if we are going to develop as a country, it is a collective responsibility. I, I was part of, I, when I went to parliament, when they were electing members of the East African Legislative Assembly, mm. parliament is now is, is on recess. And when the Speaker of Parliament was commissioning the, the, five, the 15, five, to, five to nine members of parliament to go for recess, he told the members that qualified for Yala that please, when you go to the East African Legislative Assembly, you have not gone there to represent political parties. Mm -hmm. You have gone there as a team to represent the views of Uganda oh, amidst no. Kenya, yes, amidst yes, Tanzania, yes. amidst Rwanda, amidst Burundi, yeah. amidst Somalia is on its way. Mm. It was a collective, please, Veronica, go there, Musana, go there, mm. and whoever, mm. Dr. Dr. So and so, go there. Yes. It was a collective responsibility. Mm. Why am I getting there, Joram? If we are here, this leg is here, the other hand is here, and all of us combine efforts on matters of development. It doesn't matter where you and I belong, but as long as we put our heads together, roll them together, and think about a number of things, I can tell you development will be the way to go. Let me take you back into history a bit. Okay. When people look at uh, Europe, when people look at the Americas, especially the North, they forget where they pass to get there. If you've ever attended a history class or tried to read literature from the past, there were empires, okay. the Roman Empire, mm. Ottoman Empire, uh, name it, yeah? They overran countries, which means that all the countries in, the, in, in, in say, Europe, we at one time colonies, if we say 400 years ago. 
200 plus years ago, they underwent an industrial revolution. Yes. What you're seeing in Africa happened there. People will say corruption, all that. We have merchants uh, who used to bribe uh, officials in those uh, big entities. Back that side. Yeah? So it's more of a process, and I'm so happy that Africa is trying to accelerate the process. We can't wait 400 years to get to where Europe is where America is. That's why it just can't work. That's why we are like, okay, if we have a declaration of African independence and our destiny, uh, uh, interdependence as our, as our destiny, right? That's the thing? Yeah. So we as Africans come together, uh, the president talk up, talked about uh, Pan-Africanism, to understand that, you know, uh, whether you were a colony of the French, of the Belgians, the British, bottom line, this is an African continent, heavily resourced, the most resourced and rich continent in the whole world, which should be the one which is uh, dominating uh, the trend of events globally. But let's first wait to get there, because we have a theater there, but that's where we are going. But I would say that uh, a collective effort is really very important, because Right now, if you, France, Spain, uh, name it, all those countries, they had tribes, right? They had tribes. Right now, you ask a person, where are you from? I, I'm French. They will never tell you that their dialects even differ and change based on the regions that they come from. They outgrew that. We are still in that. But if we see it as more Uganda's development is a collective effort mm -hmm. that is the starting point to remove this whole tribal issues and look at what could come out of which region northern eastern southern lake region but also going to uh, Tanzania mm -hmm. what can you produce what's your comparative advantage DRC what's your comparative advantage uh, uh, southern Sudan uh, in Somalia, what's your comparative advantage? Let us see, we don't replicate, but let us support each other and then have a block that we can trade with others. If you asked me, how do we get to that? First thing would be change the whole education system. Okay, but, but gentlemen, I would want to understand first is, are we asking too much? Because as you've traced back uh, the history of the European nations and industrial revolutions, are we asking too much for a country that has just made 60 years? Because we may look at the 60 years as too many, but yet they look too low or too small for our country. 60 years of independence, and we want to see the country develop very faster. Me, I would think the, the question would be, it's not bad to ask as many questions. Mm. By the way, it is okay. Yes. Some of us who believe in the Bible, yeah. we are told it is okay to ask God mm. because through asking we get answers. Mm -hmm. Very true. Mm -hmm. Many times we have many questions, but when the questions are not right, the question would be, are we asking the right questions to the, to the right people? Because when you look at the fact that 60 years, mm. we may think we are moving on very faster, or we may think we have moved a long journey, mm. but yet in reality, we have a long way to go. You've heard of people downtown who will tell you, you journalists, when you have an opportunity to meet the president, you never ask mm -hmm. him the right question. You've heard. I, I have, yes. I, I've They'll personally... You, it's like as if you're on, mm? you're you're on remote. You issues. go to downtown and people ask you. But Fred, you have the opportunity. You meet the president. Yeah. Why don't you ask him? The background behind that question is, when you get to the right policymakers, we are privileged as journalists that yes. on a daily basis, you have the grace of God before you. Mm -hmm. You can meet a president. You can meet a policy maker yeah. do we ask the right questions 
-hmm. Because we have the opportunity to meet the right people. Do we ask them the right questions? Questions that matter, mm -hmm. questions that improve our financial earnings on the basis, questions that guide the nation. We are going through a period of inflation. What are you doing? When we meet these policymakers, do we really ask them the right question? Because a right question leads you to a right answer. A wrong question unless you have asked something which is very critical that's when we'll give you the right answer so to me my thinking is mm. it doesn't matter how many questions we ask but are they the right questions that we need to uh, for? i would also <clears throat> want to defy a bit you may ask the right question but whom are you asking the right question Probably okay. whom you're asking the, the right question <laughs> does not, not, it's not, it's not, the does not have the capacity yeah. to answer yeah. your right question. So, so it's so, going to give you answers. So the person is going to give you okay. answers depending on uh, either the, the limitations okay. of, of what they know uh, or maybe try to, to refer you to others before you know it, your time is gone. Mm -hmm. We in business mind much about time. Okay. You see these six years? Mm -hmm. Six years we may be asking a lot. But the 200 years of the Industrial Revolution today can be cut short mm -hmm. by the improvement in the ICT for development. Okay. That uh, information communication technology is a tool that should be aiding trade should be aiding production, should be aiding industries, should be aiding uh, uh, all these kinds of, you know, what took the long years should not be now. You had, uh, who was that? Mm -hmm. uh, was it uh, Mr. Mwanguzi or uh, uh, who spoke on the ICT mm -hmm. when they were showcasing mm -hmm. uh, what Uganda has made? He was, he was. Yeah, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. what uh, Uganda has done. Yes. I mean, who ever knew, mm -hmm. say 1980, <laughs> I'm afraid to ask you how old you are, but... Uh, <laughs> no, I didn't ask. <laughs> <laughs> so you won't ask. <laughs> I, yeah, I, also, I, I will not ask, mm. but uh, some of us lived uh, in a certain period where life of tomorrow was so uncertain. So, so you are living for today. You're looking mm -hmm. at say eighty around there. Okay. To like eighty six towards the end, you're not sure of tomorrow, as long as you can live for today. But also the the technologies. Mm -hmm. Me, I started off my career in telecoms. Okay. Right? But how many people in 1998 had ever seen even a cell phone? That was a time when M uh, MTN was also coming in. Mm. Yeah, they were coming in. Way. But do you know that out uh, abroad, people had the, the, the cell phones? Very true. They had these pagers. Yeah, you see they had the pagers, they had the phones and all that. So I think it's more of uh, a chicken and egg mm. okay. issue. All right. But uh, uh, like uh, Fred said, that you can't separate politics from economics. Because the policy because, makers come Yeah, the, the policy side. makers. The, it, it's like a political economy. Yeah, a political economy. You have to relate mm -hmm. the two, but the two have to work in harmony and also appreciate the fact mm -hmm. of uh, taking advice. If academia gives advice, let the policy makers take it. If private sector advises, let them uh, uh, look into it. Let them have these round table sittings. I just don't know what happened to the Prime Minister's round table, presidential round table. Maybe you know, the both of you. Maybe there's, there's, you, you, there's a session in, there's a specific period in Parliament where members keep us, I think it's called the Prime Minister's time. It's one of that other critical time. How does it get down to my people in the, in Ovino? In the you know, my bump into me mm. down there mm. in Chikubu, down mm. the Casita kind of people. Mm. And I get out of the suits and I go there to talk business to see how to improve business amid this inflation, amid this uh, downtimes and all that. Mm. How 
do they ever know that those people exist? No, they do, but when you, you in some of the interactions, I think Fred will, will add on this, mm. uh, with some of the interactions I've had with some of the traders is they're, they're worlds apart yeah. with the people, the policy makers, mm -hmm. with the members of parliament. Mm -hmm. And um, just a few weeks, Kampala City Traders Association was meeting with the committee in parliament, with mm -hmm. uh, the deputy speaker, the speaker of, parliament. of parliament, and they were discussing some of these things on behalf of the other traders. Yeah. The traders have their issues, uh, but then their, their worlds are part their worlds are with part. the MPs or the policy makers, if we had to put it in general. So we are what we call the informal sector. How many are in the informal sector that uh, pay taxes, for example, to URA, that now Uganda can have uh, a good base of revenue to be able to uh, offer social services mm -hmm. or improved health care uh, systems? These are some of the questions. But if your worlds are apart, you don't even know the numbers of traders, mm -hmm. then uh, that means that you're putting the pressure on a little few who uh, I think the taxation in Uganda now has hit even 40 something plus. You work on a monthly knowing that your 40 plus is, is coming on is, to the account. Is going <laughs> off what you're working for maybe 55 percent mm -hmm. uh, around that. Yet if for uh, all these we are involved, look at all the stakeholders, mm. right? And, and, and maybe, Dr. and Joram, what, what we maybe we, we need to weigh in, does this speech connect with the Montua Wansi? Does somebody in Chikubo, a local trader, understand, fully understand what the president was talking about? That's, I think, where the media now needs to come in. Instead, that instead of concentrating yeah, exactly. on uh, concentrating on on the things you, you know, there are people that concentrate on things that don't matter. Yes. So this is now where we need to come in. If the speech comes at a time just on Friday, Ramadan Govi, the PS mm. said, Uganda, uh, you are his performance in the first July, mm. August, September, they've hit the target. Yeah. I was speaking to the commissioner in charge of single customs, Abe Kagumi. I said, mm. we are doing best. Yes. These are people that pay taxes. Do they in any way connect with what the president has said? Mm -hmm. Do they understand what the president has said? If they have not, whose responsibility is it to take it? Is it to break to break this information down? And two, does the present speech give us hope? No, it does give hope. It's one thing for you to give me hope, but it's also another thing for you to drive me. So, yes, there is hope. But how do I generate this hope, put it into practice, and be in position to say that tomorrow is a Monday, mm. let me wake up and, and go do and do this. Let us look so, at... So, uh, when you look at the yeah. issue to do with the technology mm. and uh, advancement in innovation uh, that Dr. Henry Clark has been mentioning here, We've also got to realize that NASA is going to launch our satellite mm -hmm. on, the orbit, uh, on the orbit very soon. Yes. And um, I think that is a very huge milestone if we had to look at the next 60 years mm -hmm. in that bracket. But also, I, I wanted us to mention something to do with the East African crude oil pipeline project. Yeah. At 44, that was uh, 2006, the realities of us experiencing or getting our own oil started and the conversations in there became more realistic than ever. 2006, Uganda then was celebrating 44 years of independence. Now, at, tw at 60 years, in February, we signed the final investment decision. This one sparked off uh, the fact that Uganda, by 2025, we shall receive our first drop of oil. Yes. And today, in one of the speeches, Dr. Hussein Ali Mwini, who is the uh, president of Zanzibar, mm -hmm. also representing Dr. Uh, also representing Her Excellency Sabia Sudo Hassan, did mention that Uganda and Tanzania are undertaking various projects in the various fields, notably in the energy and transport sector. So he says that with the oil and gas, this is going to unlock a lot of potentials for Uganda. Lots of potentials are going to be unlocked for Uganda, Tanzania, and the people of the East African uh, bloc. But then, just recently still, yes. the EU Parliament had passed a resolution, and then we thought it wanted to to go against the idea of us uh, drilling our own oil. But then it shows that the reality is 2025 we shall be getting this oil. We are looking at this sector as a potential economic booster. You know, uh, at times, 
I never see gray. I mean, in my life, I see black or white. All through. All through. This gray area is uh, one area that confuses a lot because you're not sure of the dynamics. And uh, I think Africa has been in this grayness for quite uh, so long. The statistics the President of the Republic of Uganda read out, 1.4 trillion, and uh, Africa, how much is it got? You know, 654 billion, and for Africa it's just 4.8 billion. Hmm? Uh, 1.5 trillion per industry, let's say beef. Huh? Beef, 414 billion for beef, yeah? Globally, yes. if I copy that the, right, the, the beef business. Yeah, 300 million of uh, of that uh, for Africa. Where we say that we are we are what uh, we are herdsmen, that uh, we are farmers and herdsmen. Let's say okay, coffee. Let's talk about the coffee. Hmm? When you look at coffee, Uganda's coffee. He spoke about uh, people who wanted to block it and everything. But let me get to this, back to the crude oil. Yes. These, these statistics, much as he spoke in parables, are sending a message that, you know what? Climate change is real. We have seen the effects of climate change. Changes in weather patterns, we have seen uh, floods, mudslides, and all that. I understand climate change because I have traveled so widely. I've seen the adverse effects. Who created the depletion of the ozone layer for the climate change issues today? Was it Africa? It was the industrialized nations. Now let me tell you what I'm getting to. What I'm getting to is that as much as we want to get towards uh, eliminating fossils and then go green energy, which is very good by the way, mm -hmm. it means that uh, we have gotten enough of development of our resources mm -hmm. exhaustively as the West or whether Europe, and we have uh, uh, depleted the ozone. Climate change is now an issue. Let us use climate change as a reason to block African exploration and production of the resources that we used even to take some of. Because if Africa wakes up and it uh, explores and produ produces all these, Africa is going to take over the world because there is no continent that is richer than Africa. That is one school of thought. The other school of thought is, and the world, any African who hasn't seen this, I just don't know. Maybe to the ones uh, President Seven was saying that probably they are not living or they are not in the real world. When the Russia Ukraine war broke out, it was COP26, right? After everything had been passed, that fossils, the recent fossils, of course it's going to take a transition for Africa. South African Republic is so dependent on, uh, on coal, you just do it all of a sudden and say, now go green. But go green, have they, built, have they built factories in Africa? Or we are going to buy from Germany solar panels, from Turkey and where are all those Western countries? Mm -hmm. Then it goes back, go green, but buy from us. Because we've already depleted uh, 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 the, the world. So climate change issues are so drastic. But let us get to this. Mm -hmm. Russia, Ukraine war broke out. Russia cut off its gas. A statement I saw and I almost bled in tears. After I'm like, okay, COP26, we decided this. A statement from the EU is like, uh, reopen your refineries in the countries of Europe. 
to sub to to add on to bridge that gap because oil prices are plummeting as Russia is has locked its gas its gas uh, to, the to the European countries. Oil is going high, uh, inflation is raising, food prices are raising. The French Revolution of 18 what was that? 1789. Oh, how did it happen? It happened because of what's happening right now in Europe. It's not a new thing. So to avoid a revolution, <laughs> make a U-turn on COP26. Mm -hmm. Then now you come to COP27 in Egypt and you're going to tell us the same when you've made a statement. Doctor. You'll make more of uh, your commentary on that one. I think we are going deeper into that discussion. <laughs> uh, for you, if you're still joining us, we're still having more of the discussions coming up. And uh, next on to the agenda after the break, I think we shall be breaking it down uh, fully and then um, discussing more about the future still, but summarizing the entire Independence Day celebrations. But also the issue to do with fuel. The fuel prices in Uganda are a bit stabilizing. If you're to look at uh, the valuation in the last a few weeks, mm. you will clearly know that that the prices are dropping uh, a bit in there from various petrol stations. So this is Smart 24 TV. We're still looking at Uganda at 60 years. After the break, we have more discussions. Stick around. Driving business. Shashur resumu yechiro to